What has the church got to teach us about respect for life and human yes. rights? And being a bishop that you are, ano yung itinuturo ng simbahan tungkol sa karapatang pangtao? That's right. So, uh, as a church, that has to be, as a teacher, in morality, to respect uh, the lives of every person. And respecting means uh, going to creation, that mm-hmm. each one of us is made according to the image of God. Mm-hmm. That uh, every person has that right, that image and likeness of God, so we have to respect them. And uh, to the point that nobody is allowed actually to get the life of the other. Mm-hmm. In fact, everybody is encouraged to protect uh, the life of uh, the other. Mm-hmm. So that is insofar as our basic uh, tenet of our church is concerned, and it's very clear there, uh, thou shalt not kill, something to that, uh, to that level. Mm-hmm. So still uh, that is functioning now, and uh, if possible to be given more stress, especially mm-hmm. in this point uh, that uh, we are in this kind of predicament on uh, these uh, judicial killings. What has the church got to teach people who may have actually witnessed killings, but would rather keep what they know secret to themselves so as not to endanger themselves and their family. That is another thing that was being asked for us, the Milo Commission, that we should have, uh, this was coming from Cardinal Vidal, improve the protection program of uh, the, uh, witnesses. the witnesses. Now, when we address this to uh, 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 from Commissioner uh, Sonio, who is uh, actually the one in the uh, uh, this uh, uh, point, uh, he was saying it's so very expensive uh-huh. because in the protection program it is uh, the whole uh, it is uh, actually the whole uh, family that has to be protected. And it's not just protection for a day or a week or a year, but uh, for a as long as yeah, a lifetime. And we don't have uh, the funds, uh, yeah, the funds uh, for that. So I also have uh, uh, an experience with that, with the killing of Father Fabali, that we really uh, tried to place in a sanctuary or near my house all those uh, witnesses of uh, the killings in order to protect them. And yeah, it's really true, the lot of expenses that uh, we yeah. have for their families. So that is uh, another point also of this witness program that has to be improved mm-hmm. so far as uh, this uh, judicial killings are considered. Okay, so what can we do as a church and as a people? Yeah. In uh, Kidapawan, where actually I encountered also these uh, killings, I always uh, tell my people, priests, people, sisters, please don't go alone in uh, isolated places. That if possible, you have to go in company with others. Because uh, when you are two or three, uh, very seldom that uh, there are incidents that will be happening. But if you go alone, or just uh, the two of you, sometimes uh, these cases would, uh, would happen, like uh, in Kidapawan, it was actually the couple, uh, George and Vigo, uh, there's Marcel Vigo were killed in a mm-hmm. motorcycle. But uh, all the cases I encountered during my time in Kidapawan, because they were walking alone in mm-hmm. a very uh, remote, area. remote area, so uh, this, uh, they were able to, yeah, they were killed. Mm-hmm. But it's hard actually to see you know, the witnesses and everything that happened in the area. Mm-hmm. Looking at all these things, uh, Bishop, it appears that all is not lost anyway. Yes. Uh, all is not lost. So, what would be uh, that sort of light at the end of the tunnel for us to hold on to? Uh, yeah, it's good also because I could share uh, my latest uh, experience we had in Switzerland with uh, three cardinals, nine apostolic nuncios, and uh, bishops and archbishops, or 60 of us, and one is from Iraq. Uh, and very, very uh, comprehensive and interesting sharing we had all over the world, except Australia, a continent that was not represented. Then uh, we could we could see that uh, uh, the... I would like to quote a word which, uh, if given a Christian dimension, would actually bring a solution to this case. 
And uh, this thing is uh, about uh, that, if you remember Melo, that uh, there was uh, something like uh, the, uh, there is a unification or something all over, that we are one family, something yes. like the one, one nation, one family, so to say. So if this would be uh, not used in order that the poorer nation will become poorer and poorest, if this could be used actually to help uh, the uh, the poorer nations, then I, I do believe there is a start of this aspect in this particular level. So for us in Mindanao, we are really strong in uh, reinforcing these uh, basic ecclesial communities, this uh, GKK, mm. and with the foundation of the Eucharist and uh, with the foundation of the Bible, and uh, leading people to feel that uh, they become a family in itself, although they have different family names, uh, mm. professionals, and everything, because they are they are living in one place, and they could, if they could feel and uh, hear the words of God, or the words of Christ, uh, come follow me, or something to that level. So there is that kind of uh, relationship mm -hmm. that is being built on the Bible, and especially on the Eucharist, that we are just one body. Mm -hmm. and uh, regarding uh, aspects. And I found it very useful in our uh, presentation to the BECs, and this, uh, especially in moments of crisis, and how I could feel how they help each other, mm -hmm. even uh, in matters of uh, survival, and uh, the, the food and sharing what the others have, sharing it mm -hmm. too, the have nuts. And uh, I found this as a very good, and even in the city, if people could reach this point of solidarity among themselves, then uh, th this might be a start of a new beginning mm -hmm. in our country instead of uh, being accused of uh, yeah very uh, divisive, independent, uh, finger pointing that doesn't uh, give uh, a good solution to the problems we are facing.